The following is a semi-professional... Ah, fuck it, read it yourself. Okay, welcome back to Nihau Hala. See, I didn't say alright that time either. Stargate. Um, I always thought it was funny that, like, we didn't... I never saw an episode of Stargate where something tried to go through the gate and yeah. just ran into the iris. You know? Yeah, I think there was a couple times where they, like, closed off guys and then they did hit it, but never once did the... Did anybody just kind of inquisitively go through? <laughs> well, like, what if it was, like, a benevolent species or something that put up all the stargates and then left? And like, like good guy aliens? Yeah, like good guy aliens. And, like, they were benevolent. They weren't, like, warmongers or anything like that. And they just came through and they're like, Okay, it's time to come back for the human's 500th birthday or something <laughs> like that. Because, so, like, time is different on their end. And yeah, and then, like, they come through and they just... Pink! <laughs> huh! What happened? I don't know! Went pong! Like... <laughs> what do you mean it went pong? Train yourself! <laughs> huh. What happened? Went pong. <laughs> did the humans, like, did, do they know how to, like, make that kind of technology? <laughs> do they have pong technology? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Went pong. <laughs> it's weird. And they, like, study us for, like, two years through, like, a fucking... They actually get a signal through Wi-Fi or something. <laughs> and they're like, well, their, their society's kind of fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, it's all boxes and tubes! It's like, well, what do you mean, Sergeant? <laughs> well, you know, they uh, they do a lot of their uh, data transfer through a, a box connected by tubes to other boxes with tubes. How do they get around from point A to point B? A box! On tubes! <laughs> on top of a bigger box! <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. No, nope, it's all it is! <laughs> Even something as simple as, like, <laughs> their food, man! Toppings on the pizza! Round! Round. Pizza! Round! Box! Fucking box. <laughs> Round thing put in a box. <laughs> it's a, it's put in a box. It's fucking weird. <laughs> Sausage. Oh it's a tube. Then they, they slice. If they got a hold of like our porn, up. like they're really into anatomy and physiology, but the females eat the young. But sometimes the males <laughs> do too. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> they take oh. a bath in their young sometimes. It's really weird. <laughs> oh, if only, uh. <laughs> if only, like. <laughs> Or like they follow the actual SG-1 team oh, from like- they're just murdering things like, Ah, <laughs> oh, we see that the Squindin aliens are here, like, Yeah, did you see some science experiments go through here? They killed everyone. Yeah, we're, uh, we're kind of sorry. <laughs> they evolved really fast! <laughs> did you try to go back through the gate? Uh, yeah, it, uh, it went pong. Yeah, see, it did the same for us! Shit! <laughs> we oh. weren't supposed to say that! <laughs> <laughs> so, funny point of these orcs right here, which is kind of different in this game that I remember, like, the different colors are actually supposed to be orc clans, but they chose to do this to, like, show different kinds of orcs. Oh, okay. So, like, the yellows are usually the bad moons. And, oh. And the bad moon orcs are the richest of the orc species, and it is believed they're the richest because their teeth grow the fastest. And, uh, orc currency is their teeth because they're a warlike society, so... They basically, like, kill each other and get the teeth, and that's who's the richest. So I had an aborted thought from the last episode, um, because I couldn't quite finish it in my brain. Yeah. Uh, Noodles and uh, Aski and I were all playing Exterminatus uh, uh, on this one day, and we fucking... Uh, we got onto the topic of how the orcs actually reproduce, because I was curious why all the orcs were male. Okay, there's uh, there's several reasons of this. Like, which one do you know of? Noodles' basic explanation was that they're a fungus. Okay, so, like, they kind of retconned that, uh, but not not really. That So there's actually a couple of ways that the orcs, like, come to be. That is the most uh, popular one. They really are. They uh, come in fungal clouds. And they grow in the ground. And the Grotlings and Gretchen stuff, their little squigs that they make, it's all grown out of the ground from a type of fungus. Stomp his head. Oh. They're really resilient creatures. They can live with their head. And that's part of the thing of them being a fungus. They can live with, like, their heads copped off, chopped off. And then the pain boys, which are their doctors, literally staple their heads back together and they can get back up and fight. Because that's how resilient they are. But, uh... There's a couple of, like, neat Warhammer lore that shows, like, cross-sections of orcs, and they basically have, like, in their innards, plant-based uh, life forms. You know what I mean? So, like, it looks like gills and stuff of a mushroom. Right. No, I get what you're saying. 
but that is the most common mythos. Uh, the mythos they got going on right now is they're they're like, well, we don't know. We've tried to figure it out, and they're restudying it. Uh, some of the even older lore in Warhammer 40k was that humans made the orcs, and they were meant to just be, you know, a, a dumb, brutish, like, working class for humans. Okay. And then, you know, it went horribly awry. As things are one as, to do. Yeah, as things are one to do. But now the mythos has been stuck with, yes, that they're like a fungal people. And that's why there's no females. Interesting. Because they technically have no gender, but they obviously seem more male because they're big and brutish and have deep voices. So they're kind of like the fucking uh, Namekians from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, except they're just like, they're fungal based. Uh, and their whole society is based around fighting and war. Like, they are most happiest fighting and dying and, and killing. And it's said that the orcs would be the ruling race of the galaxy, but the fact that they fight each other so much is what keeps their numbers down. Like, if they ever got together, and like, if all the orcs banded together, the universe wouldn't stand a chance. That's amusing. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, there's some funniness to, uh... Okay, so you, do you see how little armor this guy has? Well, he's a human. Right. But, like, in comparison to the space marine. Well... That's because the Space Marine's a superhuman. Okay. Did, did you know that, or...? No, I didn't. Oh, I, I thought, okay. I thought it was just a man wearing a power suit. No, uh, let me, like, go into that a little bit more depth, and, uh, this might take a little bit, but we can... It'll go into multiple episodes. So, like, the little guys in the green armor, those are basically just regular humans. They are, you know, obviously soldiers of the, uh, Imperium of Man. They're the Imperial Guard. Or the Astro Militarium. Okay. And they're basically just your average Joe gets picked up from a planet or a seed ship or whatever, and they're like, well, put this armor on, here's a gun, go and kill aliens. Are those similar to the Imperial Guardsmen, or is that a They are the Imperial Guardsmen. Oh, okay. So these guys would typically be led by some, like... By a commissar who's yeah, in charge of them. Yeah, some commissar-looking motherfucker with a giant sword. And, and so uh, this is in a lore where Earth is no more and there are basically just a ton of human planets like we have excelled in space travel by going through the warp and basically space travel is quick so why are they bowing because seeing a space marine is a very like either shit's going like if you see a space marine you're probably going to die like they're only called when bad shit happens um where will we find this lieutenant and so, like, just to give you a hint, so, like, the Ultramarines, there's only a thousand of them. Okay. And the whole thing behind the Space Marines is humans are either picked on a planet and they have their, basically, their Primarch planet, where the Primarchs either landed or it's their place, like, that they kind of call home. Like, you were talking about the Space Wolves, like, they have their own planet that they hang out on. And do their stuff. This guy here, this is Titus, right? Yeah, Captain Titus, uh, okay. the Ultramarines. So then when the whole way that Space Marines are made is from their gene seed, and it's basically gene splicing, and they come from the each Primarchs that happened in the beginning where you're like the uh, Emperor of Mankind. He kind of had these guys made from his genes, and each one was a special type of Space Marine that were his original uh, children. So these space marines are all from that gene seed of the original ultramarine, and they basically undergo, they have to undergo a test, and then only so many humans survive that, and basically the best of the best. Kind of a Spartan-like program, or the Unsullied from Game of Thrones. Yeah. And then they kind of go into a little coffin thing, and the gene seed replaces them, and they're, as you see, they're taller, like they grow a couple more feet, they get stronger, uh, they have extra lungs and body parts that can filter out poisonous air, and they live forever. So, uh, until they get killed in combat. Until they get killed in combat, but they are, uh, for all intents and purposes, eternal. Okay, so the fancier the pauldrons, the higher ranking the ultramarine, too. I noticed that. Uh, yes, if, and, the, and it also tells what type of marine you are. And the gene sequence bit uh, explains why this guy has the exact same cheekbone structure as Titus here? Correct. So or was like, that just lazy uh, modeling? No, no, no. That is very, <laughs> no, that's very much what it's like. like so, the, uh, so the Blood Angels came from Sanguinus, who was the most beautiful of all the Primarchs, so they all have, like, blonde hair, stunning features, and are very, like, handsome uh, men. Okay. And then once a Space Marine is in his armor, he never leaves it. 
Now, what is uh, Terminator armor about? Is that a space marine that died and has basically been resurrected? Uh, no, Terminator is just the hard, like, the heavy support of, like, the space marines. They're still very... What you're thinking about is the Dreadnought, and those are the yeah, walker yeah, guys. And sorry. they are dead, and their spirit is put into a machine. Because in 40k lore, there is the machine spirit, and the way they, like, explain technology is kind Captain, of being magical, I'm is a there's a machine spirit that lives eyes. in all of them, and if you use machines, you are able to converse with machines somehow. Is that uh, the same principle that causes servo skulls and things like that to be Yeah, so, like, when a human dies, their skull, and you'll act, there's actually servo skulls in this game, and that's the whole where the thing, you serve the Emperor even in, even in death. Mm. Uh where that comes from. Yeah, kind of, like, the servo skulls. And, like, I'm sure, like, other Warhammer 40k fans can, like, nitpick on the information I'm given, but that's this is very much the driest of... 40k is one of those things where you could talk endlessly about it in the lore. I think the reason I prefer Mech Warrior to 40k uh, as a tabletop game, or Battletech, I should say, uh, is that Battletech kept everything secular. There were five great houses, uh, and then the clan invasion, and they each had firmly held beliefs, but it was never such uh, a religious feel to things. There was never talk of soul uh, beyond the concept of courage. There was never talk of, like, uh, uh, an all-powerful being uh, that united them all or anything like that. Oh, okay. the all, I guess the closest they got to an all-powerful being was the Word of Blake, uh, the fucking Word of Blake battalion at Terra that... Uh, Controlled Comstar headquarters for fucking, like, entirely too goddamn long. Well, on the next episode of Night Hell Hollow, we'll go uh, more into that. And we'll get to play with a chainsword. Which is fucking awesome. Definitely Gears of War stole this shit. Uh, Gears of War stole it, and actually this very weapon inspired a similar weapon in Cyberpunk Tabletop, I believe. Oh, okay. See you next time, Nondescripts.